March 26, 1976. Malcolm Fraser was Prime Minister, Bohemian Rhapsody was number one on the Australian charts, and the St George Theatre for Young People was founded by theatre directors Errol Bray and Gary Fry. The pair wanted to offer a space for young people to create work with freedom, and to this day, young people are at the heart of everything the theatre does. To fully understand the place it is now, we need to take a look at how it got here. 1976 was the perfect time for a company like this to launch itself, given former Prime Minister Gulf Whitlam's work towards elevating Australian arts culture during his years in office, which entered just months prior. His work in this area has been described as a commitment which was unprecedented in Australian history. Some examples of initiatives Whitlam took include the establishment of the Australian Council for the Arts and more than doubling arts funding. To begin operating the St George Theatre for Young People, Errol and Gary received grants from the Australian Assistant Plan Funds, the Theatre Board and the Community Arts Board. The following year, the company changed its name to Shopfront Theatre for Young People and moved to a new venue in Carlton with a dance hall, an adjacent house and two shops. This location is where Shopfront remains to this day. It also became a registered cooperative, becoming Australia's only youth theatre company owned by its members, young people, and run by a board elected by those members. One of its founders, Errol, is quoted as saying, Shopfront exists because the thoughts and feelings of kids are not respected by society. Young people come here so that their ideas can be encouraged, develop and grow freely. Since its inception, Shopfront has done just that. It has amplified the voices of young people, allowing them to feel equal and like valuable members of the community. In its 46 years, Shopfront has had many great successes. In 1984, Shopfront's touring company went to the UK, becoming the first Australian youth arts theatre to tour overseas. And in 1985, Shopfront was invited to write a play that was chosen to be performed at the United Nations. However, as with any great story, there have been many challenges. Not long after it began renting its premises in Carlton, the owner of the building decided to sell and Shopfront could not afford to buy it. They began looking for different venues and co-founder Gary suggested the New South Wales School of Arts building. Errol shut down this idea as the building was owned by the council. He argued that Shopfront could never have true security unless it owned its own premises. But Gary saw no other option. Sticking true to the Shopfront spirit, they agreed to ask the kids about it. After seeing Shopfront's new possible home, none of them wanted to move. It was put to a vote in a board meeting. The board voted that Shopfront moved, but the kids outnumbered them and the mission to buy the building was full steam ahead. The community wrote letters to local business people, took part in 50-hour actathons and applied for grants after grants after grants. Real estate agent and parent of a Shopfront member, Greg Johnstone, negotiated a deal with the owner. The company had until June 30 to raise $100,000 to buy the building and he could not sell to anyone else before then. This was their chance. As the deadline approached, they had raised a significant sum, but it wasn't enough. They applied for a grant from the New South Wales Ministry of Arts and were shortlisted. The only problem? They wouldn't find out if they were successful until the next board meeting in mid-July. Mid-July, that was too late. But if they didn't buy the building before then, Shopfront would close down indefinitely. How could they be this close and still miss out? Errol was not willing to lose Shopfront and so he decided to take a risk and buy the building. You see, they didn't need to pay all the money right away. To take up the offer, they only need to pay 10% upfront, $10,000. The rest could wait until after the contract was signed, which would take a couple of months. By then, they'd know if they got the grant. If they didn't, they'd lose the $10,000. But with the support of the community, Errol decided it was a risk worth taking and it paid off. Shopfront received the grant and was able to buy the building. It did all of this without charging fees. Errol said, we don't need to become the sort of place we'd become if we did charge fees. The kids would become consumers of culture instead of creators of culture. This exemplifies how accessible Shopfront was and still is. Currently, Shopfront adopts a pay what you can scheme. There's a recommended price, but you don't have to stick to that. You can go to Shopfront for as little as, well, nothing. The battle for funding did not end there. In 1990, the Minister for Family and Community Services 
decided to cut Shopfront's $29,000 funding, saying the money could be better spent elsewhere. The community was devastated. 19-year-old Aileen Simley said that nobody really spoke to her at school, but then she joined Shopfront. The theatre was the only place I felt accepted. The self-confidence boost was wham, instant, she said. Michael Neary, 15, said, I'm not from a very rich family. That's the great thing about Shopfront. There's no fee. My parents really like me going. I'm doing something I like that'll help me in life. Shopfront was going to close down. That was until actress Catherine Oxenberg decided to step in. She was in Australia filming Dynasty at the time and after seeing the importance of Shopfront to young people and the community as a whole, she donated $10,000 which was enough to keep the company running until the end of the year. It then caused the government to rethink its decision and ultimately continue funding the theatre. According to Shopfront's current creative director, Natalie Rose, that same battle continues today. Funding is always a challenge, unfortunately. I also think it may be a struggle for a really long time. Like, even when we are funded, it's still a bit of a struggle because the more money you have, the more you want to do Despite the obstacles, Shopfront still thrives. In September 2018, the Vincent Family Fairfax Foundation approved funding for Shopfront's redevelopment. The money was put towards larger and better facilities, including an additional multi-purpose studio theatre and a new rooftop terrace. This expanded space allows Shopfront to offer even more opportunities for all young people, no matter what their future goals are. Youth arts is important for any young person, regardless of if they want to have a career in the arts long term or not. I think youth arts teaches collaboration and confidence and life skills that are just make people good people and create a better society of people who work together and are leaders and critical thinkers and innovators and all of those great things I think that you need to be a positive contributor to society. Shopfront acts as a second home to so many young people, including me. It's a place where you feel welcomed, accepted, and like your voice is valued. Its impact is long lasting and it has a way of bringing people back. People like Sophie Ward, who started attending Shopfront when she was just 11, and now 12 years later, facilitates drama, film, and art making workshops. Sophie says Shopfront gave her a feeling of belonging. I felt like it was a place where my differences were celebrated uh, a lot more than at school where I didn't feel like that. Her hope for the young people that she tutors is that she makes them feel the same way that she felt when she was their age. I would love to see any of the young people that I tutor in a place that brings them joy, even if that isn't arts. I just want to see people succeed and be happy the importance of young people in Shopfront's story is further highlighted in the play Decade, written to celebrate Shopfront's first 10 years. One character states, there's another whole history outside the official history, and another agrees, saying there are several hundred histories. It goes on to reminisce on all the people who have walked through its doors. You see, Errol believed that every individual kid was just as important as the whole place. Despite the fact that he no longer works at Shopfront, that philosophy is still at the heart of everything it does. Everything that Shopfront does is genuinely youth-led and is dictated by our young people from what programs we run to what productions are made to the content of those productions to any ideas young people have we take seriously. Um, and that we treat young people as leaders now not necessarily leaders just for the future. From 1976 to today, a lot has changed at Shopfront. The staff, the kids, and even the bricks and mortar. But what stayed the same is the feeling you get when walking through those doors. That feeling of love and acceptance and respect. That hasn't changed. And honestly, I don't think it ever will. You don't get into the arts for money, that's definitely certain. But I think how much I love it is actually worth like any amount of money. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Liv. <laughs>
that was cool. <laughs>